Today we are continuing our examination of forces and we're going to learn about one important tool in solving force problems and that is the free body diagram. Uh, I will probably write free body diagram enough that it will have an abbreviation FBD um, and if you see that somewhere in a problem, that's your reminder to you probably, you should draw a diagram for this problem. The goal of free body diagrams is to have a, a diagram, a picture, that shows all of the forces on an object, and you can use that, that picture to kind of visualize what's happening, and also do some mathematical work with the, with the vector components. You'll see once we, once we do it. Um, so the, the steps to drawing a free body diagram are the following, and these are, um, these are important I expect you to be able to do these in the same way these steps, um, these steps outline there, you know, for grading purposes, there is a right way and a wrong way to draw a free body diagram. Okay, step one is to replace uh, whatever the object is with a single point that is like a, d a dot on the diagram. Uh, step two is to identify all the forces and their directions. Now, these may be given to you in the problem. You may be told some of them and you're trying to find the other one, in which case you'd have to add a unknown question mark force on the object. Um, yeah. And eventually we will learn how to translate a picture or a description of an actual you know, a block on a ramp sort of thing. Like we will be able to, you know, look at that picture or that description and draw all the forces um, using using things we're gonna learn in chapter four. All right, uh, step three is to draw the forces as vectors um, from the object point. I'll explain what I mean. We're going to do an example of this and I'll explain what I mean by from the object point when we, when we do that. Uh, it's best drawn rather than described. Step four is really just now use the free body diagram to do something. So that is we can now find uh, the components of the forces or uh, maybe we're looking for the sum of the forces or maybe we're looking for a missing force or, you know, whatever else the question asks for. All right, so let's erase this and just do a, a, a quick example. So let's say, um, let's say I have an object and I'm told there's there's a ball or something, and it's being uh, there's a force on it that's like up and to the right, and a force on it that's that's just to the right or something like that. So um, we don't know what these forces are, um, but here's here's how we draw a free body diagram from this. So first we draw the object as a point. Uh, the next step is we identify all the forces and the directions. Well, we're told there are these two forces, and that's you know, maybe we're told those are the only forces on the object. Step three is to draw the forces as vectors from the object point. So that means we're going to draw F1 and F2 like this. For this particular example, that's not that confusing. Maybe, okay, here's another, here's another one. Maybe we were told that, uh, that there's a force also from something pushing this side. So there's some F3 that's like pushing on this side of the ball and these are pulling on it or something. Well, on our free body diagram, we do not draw F3 like that ever. We draw it as a vector coming out of the point. So if this is down to the right, it's going to be down to the right out of our object point like this. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is, this is not a free body diagram. This is the free body diagram. So now if we had values and angles, we could do things like find the X components or find the Y components and add those together to find the total force or something like that, you know, whatever the question is, is asking for. 
All right, let's do a little example of this. Um, yeah, let's do an example of this. This will be a full example with, with numbers. So let's say I have a, let's say I have a two kilogram block and uh, we're gonna write this in words and then draw the free body diagram from the words. Um, uh, is, let's say, our two, kilo, two kilogram block is being uh, pushed to the right with force of uh, three newtons and pulled up, maybe by a rope or something, with a force also of three newtons. So, uh, so the question is, what is our acceleration A? Okay, so we can draw a picture of this that is not a free body diagram. So here's our two kilogram block. We have a, uh, a being pushed to the right with a force like this. So we're pushing it to the right with three newtons of force and we're pulling it up with three newtons of force. So how do we turn this into a free body diagram? Okay, we draw our object as a dot. We draw our forces, well, we identify our forces, three newtons, three newtons, those are the only forces, okay. Uh, and we draw these as vectors from the dot. So they are going to look like this. And now we can combine them to, to find our, uh, our acceleration, or find our total forces, which we can use to find the acceleration. So this is a complete, a complete free body diagram for, for this problem. All right, so how do we find the acceleration? I figured this would be a good um, example to use since it's similar to some of our homework problems. So there are actually two right ways to do this problem and two right ways to do many similar problems, and that is we can, uh, starting with the forces, we can, we can go from the forces to the net force or the total force and use that to find the acceleration, or we can go from our forces uh, to our components of the forces, so, so add together the components and this might give us the components of A. We'll do it both ways and you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Okay, let's do it the first way first, I guess. So finding the net force and then using that to find A. Okay, so we have a force up and a force to the right. So these, um, if we're adding these vectors together, that's gonna be a total vector that looks like this, right? Where these are the, these are the X and Y components of some F total vector or F net that is up and to the right. And of course we can find out how big this is, the square root of three squared plus three squared. Uh, that is the, uh, that is the square root of two times three. So 4.243 newtons is how big this force is. So like these two forces combined, the effect of those is the same as a single force that is 4.243 newtons. And what angle is this? Well, this is a right triangle with two sides the same. So we know that that's 45 degrees, or we could do an inverse trig function, three divided by 4.243. You know, take the inverse sign of that also gives us 45 degrees. Okay, so our total force then is equal to 4.243 newtons at an angle of 45 degrees, if we're being really careful, 45 degrees above the plus x. Right, so that's a vector that looks like 
this. Since we're trying to find the acceleration, now we can use Newton's second law, which is the net force is equal to m times the acceleration. So our, our, uh, our mass here was two kilograms. So if I want my acceleration, I just need to divide my force by my mass. A equals f over m. So that is going to be um, the magnitude of my force, 4.243, divided by two kilograms is going to give me an acceleration of 2.12 meters per second squared. So the magnitude of A is equal to 4.243 over 2, oops, which is 2.12 meters per second squared. So our acceleration, remember, if we have a vector equation like this, these two have to be in the same direction. So if our force is up and to the right, our acceleration has to be in exactly the same direction as that. So a is equal to 2.12 meters per second squared, also at an angle of 45 degrees above the plus x direction. So this is, you know, this is one acceptable answer we could give to this problem. And now we're going to do it the other way. So the other way is we, uh, we can look at this with individual components. So that is that is like the following. We have our free body diagram. And if we sum up all the forces in the x direction, so splitting our, um, remember we can split Newton's second law into two equations that look like this, mAx and mAy. So if we look at the first one, the sum of our forces in the x direction, well, that's just this three newtons. That's the only force we have in the x direction. So we have three newtons is equal to our mass, uh, two kilograms, times our x acceleration. And this is really easy. Three divided by two is 1.5. So ax is equal to 1.5 meters per second squared. We do the same thing in the y direction and we actually get exactly the same equation. We have three newtons in the y direction and nothing else. So the sum of our y forces is three newtons. Our mass is still two kilograms. So a y is also equal to 1.5 meters per second squared. And this is also an acceptable answer. Uh, I didn't specify if I wanted the acceleration in terms of components or as a magnitude and angle. So giving me the x and y components, that is a complete description of the acceleration. I want to show you that these two answers are the same. So if I have uh, an acceleration x component that is 1.5, an acceleration y component that is also 1.5, the hypotenuse of this triangle, well, this side is going to be like the square root of 1.5 squared plus the square, uh, plus 1.5 squared. And so if I plug in those numbers, I get that that is exactly 2.12, the same as as I got doing the problem the other way. So these two answers, you know, they are the same answer. We're just writing that same answer in two, two mathematically different ways. And it's totally not important to me which one of these paths you take. Uh, remember, if you are, you know, you may be asked for the x and y components, or you may be asked to give the magnitude and an angle of the force um, or, or, or acceleration. Those are both possibilities. But if I don't specify, you know, you are free to, to Pick either one, pick however you want to give the answer.